1975, there's a look inside the iconic Mercedes-Benz Superdome in downtown New Orleans. Today, after a crazy opening weekend, it's on to week two, and we've got a good one here between the Cleveland Browns. and the New Orleans Saints. The children will grow and it's the final weekend of summer, but we've got the NFL and we're underway on EA Sports. This is taken about seven yards deep and no run back here. This will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25-yard line. time with Alvin Kamara and that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield okay there's a tone setter first play from scrimmage stuff him in the backfield you know what they were doing last night in the hotel room <laughs> visualizing exactly that that's what they were thinking about making that play having leverage lower than the offensive lineman getting into the offensive backfield knocking someone down just what you said setting the tone early for this game Jeez, you are fired up when i see a play like that i can't help it alvin Kamara really settling into the league in his second season and of course he came out of tennessee but not a lot of people remember he started at alabama he did and got caught in that big mix of running backs at bama and they like those bigger, thicker runners, those guys who can break down defenses through the middle. Alvin Kamara ended up leaving Alabama, going to a junior college for a while. I believe he went to Hutchinson, Hutchinson. Junior College before matriculating at Tennessee and finding his way to the Ready. NFL, where he is now a star. Ready. Ready. Breeze now on first down. Oh, he's got some breathing room. Final move inside the 40. And all the way down to the 33-yard line. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Even though it's the opening drive of the game, he wasn't shy about taking off and running with the football, even knowing the defense is definitely going to take their shots at him. And that's exactly what they did. He better learn to slide, otherwise he won't be around to finish this one. Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. To throw is Breeze. That's out to Hill, right side complete. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. The numbers for Hill a week ago. Eight catches and even 60 yards and a touchdown. And most teams mark down big plays as ones that gain 10 yards or more. He certainly has big playability, and we just saw it on display. Breeze now. That's going to go as a loss of seven, and it'll set him back for second down. Off the play fake to Kamara. It's Breeze. And they're going to get him. He's sacked back around the 28. Miles Garrett in there to drop him. And sacks on first and second downs are going to lead to a third and long. Charles, a little bit of feast or famine on this drive. They moved the ball okay, but they've been sacked twice now. And they've got to figure out how to plug that leak a little bit, right? Keep them away from the quarterback because when he's not being hit, as you mentioned, they're moving the ball well. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. That's a good job there, creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. And Lutz's kick is good. And the Saints are going to take a 3-0 lead. It's a pretty good opening drive. That'll make the home fans somewhat happy. They wanted six, but they got three in the early lead. And they should be happy. The guys look good getting down the field. That's got to give them a little bit of hope that good things are in store here today for them. Throw, throw, throw. 
Throwing now, Taylor on first down. Over the middle, complete. It's Gordon. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That's good for a Cleveland first down, an 11-yard pickup. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield, incomplete. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away, and now it's third. What's the old adage, be quick but don't hurry? Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Here's Taylor. Flushed out right. This is Johnson. He's got it. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That goes for a gain of 31. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10, down at the 33. They'll run for the first time with Johnson. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Complete here. It's high. Oh, and now he bowls him over. The Browns passing game finding its stride. They've got another first down. Just the first quarter, but tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you, from my days, I remember being in college and wearing up. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Dontrell Inman, his first touchdown of the new season. And the Browns have taken the early lead. Man, he just ran a terrific route. Extremely hard to defend when it's run that precisely and the ball's delivered that accurately. Gonzalez now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way we think you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Ready? You ready? On second down, here's Breeze. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Jamie Collins coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. And that is the third sack this offensive line has allowed this first quarter. Yeah, that puts him on pace. Let me do the rudimentary math here. To be sacked 12 times in a game, I know he's not going to go for that. I wonder if it's going to reshape what they decide to do on offense in terms of play calling. Well, I can tell you what, when he popped up, shaking his head, frustrated right now behind center. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play, and the officials are instructed. With the contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the Browns will take over first and 10. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked.
but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Credit the tackle to Kurt Coleman. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Now Taylor rolling to his right. And he'll slide down to avoid the contact. Taylor able to use those legs of his to pick up a first. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. On first and ten, it's Taylor. To the right side, and he's got Landry complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A gain of 32 that time. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and 10. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 as they've got it to the 28-yard line. Now Taylor on first down. Throws a quick hitter on the slant. That's complete. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. Now it's Taylor. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Cameron Jordan in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Well, that's a pretty darn good start to his season, huh? A sack in the opener, adds a second one here. That tells you about his offseason. He came in determined to have a big year, and it's paying off. On right, second down, Taylor's throw incomplete. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. Slants are so tough to cover because everything happens so fast. But sometimes it happens too fast for the guy catching the ball because all these movements have to be quick off the line of scrimmage and then all of a sudden the ball's right on top of you. And maybe he got a little bit ahead of himself there. And a lot of times coming in with good pace and he dropped it. Well, the defensive coverage was good. So good he just decided to make a play of his own and it worked out. Yeah, you often wonder if they think to themselves, was the coverage too good to allow him to run the football? I think you'd rather take your chances with him doing exactly that. And he beat him on that play all the way to the end zone. Gonzalez good on the extra point. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 12. Out is the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Again, it's Kamara. It's a foot race. Touchdown, New Orleans. A big play there. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Saints are back within a score. Heck of a start to his season. He had two touchdowns in the opener last week. Another one here in week two. Well, I don't want to call him a touchdown machine this early, but sometimes you get locked in, you know, and you feel good about things. You get into that zone. And those touchdowns come in bunches. He may be off to that kind of a start. It's like he was shot out of a cannon. I would imagine success this early. Great momentum going forward for the rest of the year. He keeps this up. They'll soon be chanting MVP anytime he touches the ball. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. 
And the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it upfield, and that brings up second down. Appeared to me he was just trying to find an open receiver and got forced out to his right. Had to come off of a guy downfield and try to hit his back. Unable to connect. Should have been. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Third and long. Taylor and company hoping to regroup after the sack. Taylor steps away to his left. Now he'll let it go on the run. Deep left side. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender is making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant to the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. A good return there, 17 yards. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 43. They start the drive on the ground. Kamara. And a good burst there gets him seven up to midfield. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Ready, son. Yellow lady, yellow lady. On second down, Kamara. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. So just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. On the counter, here's Kamara. And an alley to run. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. We've seen him break off a big run already in this game, and for a second, that one looked like it might be another. Yeah, I think that any defense would say, look, we can't let him get to the second level because sometimes he'll break off the big run on his own, but oftentimes you get additional blocking at the second level, which gets you deeper into the secondary. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. On second down, Ingram. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We're back to New Orleans after this. A reminder coming up at halftime. The coach is back. He made it through the first weekend. That's the good news. And he's going to regale you with stats and scores from around the NFL here in the early games in week two. You think he questioned coming back for week two having to work with us? I think he did. He's just happy that he is far away in Orlando. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. And the trick play doesn't work. Good reaction there defensively. And it'll be fourth down. And Lutz puts this one through. And the lead is down to one now at 14-13. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. They'll throw on first down with Taylor. And some room to run now. And he's brought down after a good game. 23 yards on the tuck and run. On first down, it's Taylor. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. Slow, slow, slow. 
throwing on first down. Taylor. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Alex Okafor. Able to get in there and drop him behind the line. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That went to the sack. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. First down, Taylor, rush coming, and he's taken down. Sheldon Rankins able to swap him from that defensive tackle spot for a loss of five. Now Taylor to throw on second down, and the pressure gets to him again. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. Third and long, Taylor and company hoping to regroup after the sack. Off the play fake, here's Taylor. He'll buy some time, and he's going to go down again. Cameron Jordan in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. Now on fourth down, we've got a whistle here and a timeout, as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. at the 25-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we... All right, hang on. We'll jump over halftime. The Browns are going to get the second half kickoff, and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway. This is fielded at the goal line. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show him one thing, hit him with something else. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one goes for 24 yards. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch. But you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. A first down carry here for Johnson. And down to the 36-yard line here. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Dancing to his left. And he slides to avoid the hit. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. Here's Taylor on first down. And this will be incomplete. 
Carlos Hyde was the target, and that'll bring up second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. First down, a run with Hyde. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. What a luxury to have a guy like this who can not only spell your starter, but can come in and keep drives going. On second down, here's Taylor. And he's got it. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Dontrell Inman with two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Browns add on to their lead. Gonzalez able to tack on the PAT. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Gonzalez now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start there. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned. Now Breeze wants the football, and I think the Browns got it. They did. an accumulation of the pressure we've seen all game. I mean, he's been on the turf a whole lot because of sacks. Eventually, something else happens as well, and this time it was a turnover. Yeah, caught up to him. They'll hand it off now. Johnson. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. On second down, Taylor. Eluding the pressure right. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball, and you can put pressure on him. Nowhere to get away, and down he goes. Taylor is sacked. Offensively, they're going to have to figure this out before next week. Seven sacks in one game. Yeah, and that's more than any quarterback should have to bear. And if this continues on, there will be another quarterback in the game because no one can stand up to this week after week. So he missed that field goal earlier, but he says not this time. Able to knock it through, give his guys three. I like his poise. I like his confidence, his belief in himself. Sometimes when you miss that first one, you see a lot of guys sag and they can't make the next one. Not in this case. Stepped right up like a pro. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Wait, Big word. Wait. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. That, don't you? All game long, they started moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> ready, ready, sir. Now Breeze throwing on second down. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. He'll take this up to about the 37. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. 
call it a loss of two on the play. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. The last catch took him two yards in the wrong direction. So now what can they do on third? Now Breeze on third down. Throw left side taken in by Hill. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. And they'll start the drive on the ground with Johnson. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. A good pick up there for the Browns, 15 yards. Whether well, it's what we call an even front or an odd front, and an odd front's real easy to figure out. If that guy is lined up over the nose of the center, typically that's an odd front defense. Odd number of people, meaning 3-4 versus the 4-3, which is an even front. You've got to control those guys in the middle. Whether it's the nose or the two defensive tackles in a four-man front, if those guys can't get moved, you cannot run the ball in the middle of the field. And in that play, they were able to actually take care of business. To throw is Taylor. To throw on second down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Gordon. And he goes out of bounds across the 40-yard line. Holding offense. Well, there have been a ton of sacks that were just trying to prevent another. So what you're telling me is the conventional way has not really worked for them, huh? Not at all. Not at all. So he tries to grab him here, and they still get caught. Taylor a throw. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Over went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Here's Taylor to throw. Fights loose. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Cameron Jordan getting him once again. His third sack of the afternoon. Jordan coming off a Pro Bowl campaign in 2017. Third time he's had that honor. And he continues to play better and better as his career extends. Think about this one. Fourth in the league last year in sacks with 13. Helped the New Orleans Saints defense improve overall and helped lead them to the playoffs. And now he shares Pro Bowl honors with his father, Steve, who was a Pro Bowl tight end in the NFL. Good starting field position for him as they come up first and ten. Ready. Ready. The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Mark Ingram really coming into form in the NFL. First five years in the league, didn't have a 1,000-yard season, but he's done it the past two years. Yeah, and I think a couple of reasons for that. Number one, offensive line has been rebuilt, and they put a lot of resources into that. Number two, he's got great running mates back there. Tim Hightower two seasons ago. Then last year, of course, the sensational Alvin Kamara. And last but not least, the defense is playing so much better than the On first down, Breeze. That's caught by Meredith right side. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Back-to-back -back nice plays. 12 yards that time and a first down. Breeze now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and 10. Throwing on first down is Breeze. And he just gets rid of it. Throws it away. The wise move there looked like nobody open. Now second down. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. Throw left side, complete. That's it. And they do stop him, but he takes it all the way to the two. A good pick up there, 26 yards. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there. Getting it to their back end. And he takes it across and into the end zone. Touchdown, Saints. Mark 
Ingram, his second touchdown on the season. And the Saints have cut it back within a score. Solid job up front, really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. That was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run, end result, six points. Touchdown. Well, I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet, said go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call, and he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion. And now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession, and that was punt the football, because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing, but control the game offensively, put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. Holding offense. Now that's one they hate. Still the ball's got to come all the way back. So that's an explosive play, a really explosive play that gets wiped out, and they have to start over after the penalty. Here's Taylor. And a tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Well, it's like that in just about every position. And sometimes if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away. And that's... Now look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked up by Marcus Williams. Trying to get it to Landry there. Well, when someone other than the quarterback is throwing the football, it's either beautiful or a disaster, and here it was the latter. Nowhere in between, right? I mean, you're exactly right. It takes a fortitude to call that type of a play, but when it doesn't work, oh, boy, you wish you hadn't. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the Ready? offense. But you Ready? typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he can't run out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. And he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short game. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Cameron Meredith, his first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Saints have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. Lux with the extra point, and that will make this a four-point game. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This fielded at the two. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Browns offense heading back out to take possession. And we have seen a lot on the scoreboard here in this quarter. So you know, sometimes you talk to me about tendency breakers on offense. These defenses struggling. Are there tendency breakers on defense? All defensive coordinators keep something in their hip pocket for these types of situations. What can we do to slow down the onslaught? But the biggest thing is make sure these guys encourage each other, pick themselves up, because right now, it's been a really tough ball game trying to stop these offenses. Oh, it really has, especially as of late. Throwing now, Taylor on first down. And he's taken down here by the Saints. I think normally we would talk about this more with basketball players and football players, but let's adopt it in this case. He's a stat sheet stuffer. Had the interception earlier, now a sack. What, he just needs a touchdown for the trifecta. That's about all he needs, and he's going to go for it. Forced out to his left. An open receiver, that's David Njoku. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And a nice gain of 21 yards. 
And there's Tyrod Taylor doing what he does best. Look, he's taken a few lumps along the way, and some people haven't believed in him. But this is where he excels, outside of the pocket, making plays. As prolific with his legs as any quarterback in the league? I would say yes to that. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you go make a play on the football. Now Taylor got his man complete over the middle. It's Gordon. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. And they pick up 10, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. Here we go. It's Taylor on fourth down. Flush to his right. He may try and run for this. But well, we kind of looked at each other as they decided to go for it. But in the end, great execution. A six-yard gain, and it all works out. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. He's got a man wide open. It's Landry. And they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. The Browns passing game finding its stride. They've got another first down. And now all of a sudden, the shoe's kind of on the other foot. Maybe you pull the reins back here a bit? Yeah, a little bit because you got to make sure that you don't score too quickly. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. 11 more on that one and another first down. This defense needs a big play in the worst way because so far, they're not putting up much of a fight. If they don't get a stop here soon, this game could be over for them. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. He's back to throw. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him, but instead, he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead. He takes it across for the touchdown, and they've taken the lead late in the final minute of the fourth. Wow, wow. How many people are watching this one right here who gave up? Because that score, they might want to try and rush back into this stadium. <laughs> yeah. What looks like is going to be the game deciding score, although a little bit of time left, so you can't count your chickens before they're hatched. Well, they better come back in here and watch this one because you and I, we're not going anywhere. We want to see this one play out. Around the NFL, they're in the fourth now in Green Bay. And the Vikings able to take home the victory there. A win would be their first of the young season. And with time a factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll put it out to the 25. Ready? Ready? What's that? What's that? What's that? He'll look to throw. The catch made over the middle by Ginn. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they get it with 16 seconds remaining on the clock. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. They'll look to throw. This is caught by Gale. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two. As they'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. Breeze now. 13 out of 17 throwing the ball. He's got a first down. Back to throw. And he'll win it over the middle. And now with six seconds remaining, they're going to burn their final timeout. One final try here for Breeze. He's going to let it fly. And this is incomplete. So no miracles here on the final play. And this ball game is over.
Well, Charles, a pretty exhilarating finish to the end of this ball game. At the end, the Hail Mary prayers, though, they went unanswered. Could have won it, but couldn't get it done. Almost fell schoolyard or playground, didn't it? Yeah, you, know, you remember when you called that play? Everybody just go along <laughs> and try and find someone open. They gave it a shot, but unable to successfully complete it. So for the Browns, it was a great all-around performance as they come out of this one with the victory. And they will head home next week to take on the New York Jets. Meanwhile, for the Saints... If, if, if the squad ain't with me, then it ain't right. Yeah. Ay. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Ay. Yeah. Ay. 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 Same squad, same squad, same squad. Drop, drop, coop, dodge, rain drops. Big back plays on FaceTime. Squad.